Is it possible that SvelteKit is faster than Vue, React, and Angular, its three biggest competitors? Let's find out. Hello, hello, YouTube. My name is Braden Gerard, and today I'm gonna look at SvelteKit's speed and performance, and I'm gonna compare it to the other three big name frameworks out there, being Vue, Angular, and React. And I'm actually gonna compare SvelteKit to those frameworks directly. So maybe it would be more fair if I compared SvelteKit to Nuxt or Next for React or, uh, well, I mean, Angular is, is, is sort of all of that together already. So Angular is fine, but, but with React and Vue, like I'm gonna just compare it straight down to the frameworks themselves without these other frameworks that have been built on top of them. So really it's not even a fair comparison, but let's see just how performance SvelteKit is against React, Vue, and Angular. Let's jump into the code and do some performance tests here. Okay, so to get started, we're gonna start with SvelteKit and we'll see what the performance looks like on that. So to show you that this is a brand new project, we're gonna make a directory called Svelte and then we're gonna go into that directory and we will install the SvelteKit project uh, in its Svelte at next. And it's saying, do I want TypeScript? No, CSS, okay, good. Now we will do an npm install. And now we will do an npm run build. And then we'll do an npm run start. All right, so localhost 3000. So if we open that up, all right, here's our project. Let's go to our lighthouse and look at the score here. So we'll do a score. And we get 100 for performance, 93 accessibility, best practices, 100. SEO 80. All right, so let's go over now to a view project. So if I go back and I've already installed the view CLI, so I'll say view create to create a new project and we'll just call it view. Uh, yes, I already have a directory called view, so we'll overwrite it. All right, it's done setting up the project. So let's go into the folder now and we will do an npm run build. All right, it's done building. So now we will move into the disk directory and we'll just do a serve from there. So we'll open that up on port 5000 and let's take a look at the lighthouse score. All right, we get a 99 on performance and 86 accessibility, 100 best practices and 90 on SEO. All right, let's go over now and take a look at Angular. So I have the Angular CLI installed as well. So we'll do an ng new Angular. Do I want strict type checking? No, not for this. Would you like to add Angular routing? No, we don't need routing. CSS is fine. All right, it's done installing, so let's do an ng build. Sorry, let me first change into the folder for Angular and then we'll do an ng build. Now, 
this will also build Angular to a uh, disk directory, so we'll change into that directory and serve it as well. The build process uh, has been significantly longer uh, on both Vue and Angular so far. Uh, not to mention how long the installation took for all the node modules, but um, let's see how the performance is. All right, it is done building, so now we'll go into that distribution directory and we will do an serve. All right, there's the Angular page, so we can inspect this default Angular project and go and do a Lighthouse score on that. We get 100 for performance, 95 accessibility, 100 best practices, 90 SEO. All right, and finally, let's take a look at React. So we'll make a React directory here. Uh, we already have one, all right, perfect. Oh, why my tab completion is not working today. All right, nothing in here, perfect. So let's create a React app in this folder. So we'll do an npx create React app, and we will call it my app. I guess I didn't have to create a folder because it's going to create its own folder again, but that's fine. Um, so we'll let that install. All right, so we've installed our React app. So if I go into the React app folder and we do an npm run build. All right, the production build is done. So now we can serve that build. So we'll say serve dash s build. And if we open that up, here's our React app. So if we inspect and we go to Lighthouse and generate a report, we will see how React did. All right, 100 on performance, 94 accessibility, 100 best practices, and 100 SEO. So to recap, we had a 193, 180 on the uh, Svelte kit. We had a 99, 86, 190 on the view. On Angular, we had 195, 190. And on the React app, we had 194, 100, 100. So I was really just looking at performance. And if we look across the three, there's not much difference there. Um, the view app I've run before and I've actually seen it at 100, so I don't know why I hit a 99 this time. Um, so for performance wise, the base projects, they're all optimized pretty well uh, without changing the starter project at all. And then that would make sense, right? Because obviously these guys are gonna optimize their frameworks to be as fast as possible with their initial project setup so that those can be the times that they talk about or the speeds that they talk about. Um, now, one thing that I will say is that view uh, it took an extremely long time to set up the initial project and as well as build for production. Uh, and the same with Angular. React was a little faster, but it still took significantly longer than, uh, than the SvelteKit project. SvelteKit project was like almost instant to set up the project, to build it. Um, and, and, that's, and that's thanks to Snowpack. Um, I know Vue now has a, a new tool out called Veet, which uh, takes advantage of this uh, of the new ESM module. So it also can build very quickly, um, but I was just using their CLI. Uh, so that's something to note, as well as Angular. Uh, Angular, you should be running it in production mode, which I'm not actually doing, even though I built it for production. I didn't run it in production mode. 
Um, so you might get some better performance there. But to be honest, I was pretty surprised that uh, Angular scored very well uh, right out of the box because Angular is always tooted for being uh, poor in performance. So um, either way, uh, I, I'm happy to see that SvelteKit is, is at 100. Uh, and, and the fact that it's competing with these other three guys who are just base frameworks and SvelteKit's actually like a framework sort of built on top of Svelte, um, I think that's pretty impressive and I think that's awesome. Uh, plus, if you uh, know a bit more about Svelte, you're not actually shipping any packages to uh, your final project with Svelte or to, to the browser um, because Svelte is just compiling to native JavaScript, whereas Vue and Angular and React all have uh, their own JavaScript files that need to be included with the project for them to run correctly. Uh, whereas with Svelte, you're actually just using it as a compiler and you're just shipping uh, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript at the end of the day. So your bundle size is going to be much smaller with Svelte um, because you're just shipping, again, vanilla JavaScript. So pretty good comparison uh, with the base projects, and uh, I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for tuning in to another one of my Svelte Kit tutorial videos. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up so that you can tell YouTube you like what you're seeing. If you want to catch more of my SvelteKit tutorial videos, make sure to subscribe to my channel because I'll be sure to keep adding SvelteKit videos in the near future. Thanks, have a great day.